the topic tonight is the those who are aspiring to be the next governor of Anambra State in the upcoming Anambra election this this year. Can you give us the number of those we now know as aspiring to be the next governor? What number do we have at the moment? We have 27 aspirants on our list that are on the banner this evening. Again, please give us the names of the aspirants we know that have indicated interest in that contest. Can you go through the list again? Yes. We have uh, one, Senator Ifan Yoba of the YPP, Valentine Ozibo of the PDP, Ben Etiaba Esquire of the APC, Group Captain Nam Den Noruka, retired of Labour Party, Honorable Kudulia Zewankwo Apga, Chief Nam Den Wawo PRP, Senator Andi Oba APC, Godwin Ezemo PPA, uh, Honorable Chris Azubob PDP, Dr. Godwin Marika PDP, Engineer John Bosco Nunko APC, Chief George Mwagal APC, Dr. Stanley Uzo Chuku Abga, Obunike Ohebu Esquire PDP, Chuku Masoludo Abga, Dr. Jidozia Wilson Wampo, his party, his banners did not indicate his party yet, Obioro Konko PDP, Chief Osta Chidoka PDP, Senator Uchepunife PDP, Honorable Tony Moye APC, Nicholas Ukachukwabka, Nzaka Chukusulivan Wampo Abka, Ambassador Ike Olivo PDP, Maswelo Koye APC, Honorable Nonso Smato Kafo Abka, Oselo Kobaze PDP, Zeribe Ezanuna PDP. Thank you. Why do we have such a large number of contestants? Second, what is the state of Anambra State today? Third, what are the problems should we expect the, light, the next governor to solve? And fourth, who among these candidates have the best attributes to be the next governor? Um, gentlemen and ladies in the studio, um, my name is Comrade Paul Ike Chukun As a matter of fact, I'm the, um, one of the moderators of co-hosts, the host of this program. And it is all about um, the forthcoming and number state election. And we have litany of numbers of people who are into the race, you know, to join. And um, we always um, know that Anambra State is a wonderful state that God has so far, um, so far blessed. A, 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 not, a, a synopsis of Anambra State is that um, this is a God's giving state, and the state, being one of the 36 states in Nigeria, located in the, south, the southern east of uh, region of the country, you know, formed in 1976 from the former East Central State. So Anambra State has a, you know, is a capital, uh, the state's capital is Oka, a rapidly growing city that increased the population from approximately 2.4 uh, to 5 million between 2016 to 18. And um, the city of Onesha historically uh, has a historic port city from the pre-colonial pre uh, era, which remains an important um, culture of commerce and it remains a citadel of um, international and um, national business. And why I'm giving this synopsis is for our viewers all over the world that are just entering now, so that they'll be able to know the, the discourse at, at hand. And this discourse is all about um, the forthcoming election in Anambra State. As we, will, we may have known, the list of these um, people, the contestants coming forth is quite very um, um, large. And we are scrutinizing in assessments, the personality traits and the capacity of those who are vying for this um, election, who will succeed the incumbent governor of Abga party, Governor Willie Obiano. And we have the list of those who are contesting to be a makeup alert, Dr. I mean, um, um, uh, Asoloka Obeze, Honorable Nonso Smart, Masuel Okoye, Ambassador Ike Alibo, um, Nze Okachuku Sullivan's Nicholas Okachuku, Honorable Tony Moye, Senator Uche, Open Face also on the race, Senator um, Ifanoba, Valentino Zibo, Ben Tatiaba, Group Captain Nandi Noroka, Honorable Okuli, um, um, Ezewankwo, Chief Namdi Nkwo, Senator Andioba, and um, Godwin Ezimo. Honorable Chris Emeka, Dr. Godwin Mwoka, Amadoka, 
Dr. Godwin Madoka has been very wonderful, and we have, I think, his representative in the studio. Chief George Maola, Dr. Stanley Ozochukwu, um, Obenike Ohebu, Chukwu Masoludo, Dr. Charles Soludo, uh, Professor Charles um, Chukwu Masoludo, sorry, Dr. Chilose Wisin Wankwo, Obiora Wankwo, Chief Fosita um, uh, Chidoka. These are the young men and women who have volunteered themselves to give an umbrella state what they call their best capacity. And what we are scrutinizing is who amongst them that's gonna deliver. And this program, I think the next episode is gonna be a confrontation of heated debates amongst all the contestants. So people in the purview of this contest might certainly win the primaries or might not win the primaries. That is when all of them will be assembled and for another masterpiece of um, you know, outing of this kind. So what we are asking is this, between these people, who amongst them do you think that is competent in capacity building that could succeed Governor um, William Obiano? Okay, let us start from um, uh, Professor Charles Soludo. We know that Professor Charles Soludo served this nation as a CBN, um, um, uh, president. So as it's a boss of the Nigerian um, banking sector, we witnessed what he consolidated of our banks to international, you know, purview that we do not lack any financial lacuna in order to compete with the international counterparts. So who do you think that can succeed Governor Biano? Let us analyze uh, Professor Charles Soludo. Over to you, please, Sir Emma Kabala. Yeah, thank On you. Professor Charles Soludo, what do you assess him of his capacity? Is he what competent to succeed me? Governor um, William Biano? No, funny enough, um, amongst all the candidates, I think he is the most uh, qualified for that position. You mean who? who? Soludo, Soludo himself. Uh, I don't know much about the other candidates, but Soludo to me, Soludo to me, from what he did as the CBN governor, I think being the only non-banking CBN governor, if I'm not mistaken, he's an economist lecturer, he was able to take some bold, bold risks, which Nigeria has never seen before. He was able to liberalize our economy so much that uh, the entrepreneurial uh, 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 spirit in the country was somehow revived, was somehow energized, catalyzed to grow. We stopped depending so much on government. We started depending on ourselves through financial lending and all that. All that. He understood that. And I remember when uh, Soludo contested for governorship, there was something he said to transform Anambra to Taiwan. Most people didn't understand what he was saying. I think there was a communication gap. And being someone from Anambra who is familiar with what is going on in Anambra in terms of our industrial spirit, our uh, ability to to trade, to, co to do commerce, you know? We are, we are known for that, uh, uh, that ability. I think we need a governor that we should be able to take uh, the Anambra people to the next level. The threat of uh, IT, modernization, technological advancement, AI, and all that, is going to be a big threat to the average Anambra man. Because since we are still dealing with the analog style of business, I was uh, fortunate to be in my village during the lockdown last year, where I was able to get a feel of what uh, Anambra people expect from their from their governorship aspirants, and I was shocked that uh, what most people are interested in are what the person has done, if he has uh, built schools if he has given people employment in his village, he has done road and all those things. I told them that you were opening yourselves up for 419 governments, people who will come and recoup whatever they have done for their communities. 
I had a very long discussion over this this idea of what the uh, a, a quality the quality of a governor should be what he has done. I had a very long argument. I thought that no, it should be what comes from the person's uh, uh, brain, from his mind, from his experience, from his knowledge. But people seem to be interested in what they have done for their people. So that to me is a big challenge. I don't know if it's because of the educational level of- uh, Mr. Bala, uh, let, let me interject, uh, Paul, please allow me. When you say, what yeah. do you blame people who say, we want to see what you have done before you tell us what you can do. What is wrong with that? What, we, what do you think? People say, what have you done before promising us what you can do? Fine. I, I believe the content of the person, okay, should supersede someone who has money that will come and build things on the ground for you. And knowing the Nigerian politics today, a lot of corrupt individuals have found their way into our politics, into our democracy, into our government, and they have made a development very impossible for Nigerians and Nigeria at large. They will want to recover whatever they have invested. First of all, they are not interested in moving the state or the people forward. You understand? And even talking about what the person has done, someone like Soludo, I believe, has done something great in this country. He has been able to demonstrate that he can rule even as a president. He can even rule as a president in this country. He has the IQ, he has the knowledge. He's an economist. He knows how to move around and play around with resources to achieve good results. I believe that we are still enjoying what Soludo did up to today. If not for the new, the, his uh, 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 superseding uh, uh, CBN governor that came to reverse a lot of things that he did. Nigerians, we are doing well. He identified the middle class. Nigeria today is under threat. The middle class is almost non existent, it's on, it's on the threat of extinction. So Ludo identified this and he quickly made it possible for all this uh, financing and all that aimed and targeted at the middle class. He, need, he knows that we have to uh, expand it, you know? But uh, some of these people coming today, I don't think that uh, they, are, they really have the interest of the people at heart. So Ludo, to me, has the quality. And there's a name that people mentioned that uh, I would not like to mention his name, but on a personal experience with him, I don't think he should be among those people at all. Shouldn't be why among not those. Why not mention his name? So what is wrong with mention? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go into another area of discussion. But, you know? but, but I think uh, that is the essence of this discussion for us to know the personalities of those who are going to be governor. Okay, well, yeah, you know him, the senator that uh, won through YPP and uh, somehow moved to another party after that. You know, we don't like, we don't want such characters. They should be men of integrity. It should be men of honor. Before then, he has had some funny scandalous, scandalous stories, which now transferred to that election. Look at what he did. They just used that party to win, then dump them. Are you talking of uh, are you are you talking of Senator Fanyo by here? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure there are his supporters are here. Supporters of Fanyo uh, will be here. Uh, so to, uh, de yes. to defend their candidates. It's very unfair to that party. Very unfair. A party that is trying to find its ground or weight in Nigeria, you came and used them and dumped them. They are looking for every opportunity to be known, to be exposed as much as possible. It's very unfair. We don't like such people. So you should so never. You, 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 All right. This okay. network, uh, my name is Kamen Chukobuna. I am the Snow Special Advisor on Strategic uh, Communications so for the Distinguished Network. I want to start by addressing. Uh, my brother that just finished speaking. Obviously, uh, we can all see that he's not informed. The senator is very much in YPP. Okay. The senator is coming out for the contest under the platform of the YPP, and he has all the chances to win. He has all the chances to win. Why do I say so? Senator Ifanyoba is coming with a new mantra, a status quo change. The era of rhetoric. The era of good English, the era of uh, the era of uh, these uh, grammarians, what I call grammarians, who speak very well, but when it comes to delivering the goods on the ground, they go missing. 
it shouldn't be it shouldn't be our our uh, 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 what what do I call it? it shouldn't be our lot in Anambra of today. The governor today that we have in Anambra has left a lacuna that needs to be filled. We all agree on that. And if right. that is what we want as a state, I think it is time we give a chance to somebody who is homegrown, who is an Anambra to recall, who knows the all the nooks and crannies of the state, and who has that hands-on experience. If Ayoba has been in the Senate for how long? Just one year and one year plus. And he has he has done wonderfully well. Apart from becoming the prince of the Senate by virtue of uh, the wonderful bill that was taken to Buhari to sign in London, we are, we are, which now gives Nigeria so much money, you know, he has done well. He has he has he has he has delivered. He has he has gone into the business of delivering for our people with that business mindedness, that that uh, uh, entrepreneurial spirit that the state needs. You know, I don't think we should dwell so much on those. Those who would say, okay, the vacation, they, they, are, they are this, and this, they tell us all the good things. But when it comes to delivering, delivering for our people, when it comes to putting those indices that it, that it, it gets growth and development, they go missing. During the COVID, who else did a quarter of what the distribution network did? He was able to deploy his capacity. He went out, he thought outside the box. He deployed the capacity. He gathered his friends. He raised almost 500 million. He built hospitals during the Corona era. And then I, I was here listening to somebody else who is telling us about uh, some uh, some professor who we also know in this state. We also donated money for. And I heard he was in billion in Memorial Hospital. The hospital was not built after 12 years. This is what we call. This is the same campaign. This is not English. What happened to that hospital? The memorial hospital in the modern home. It wasn't done. It's not that Okon Jiwala made a statement. He said, some, this same our brother. He's the worst CBN governor that we've had. I had the links in CBN last week. I went to CBN, and the, almost the whole staff in CBN, they are Kano people. Our people are not in CBN. Who did Toludo employ in CBN? One person. Who has seen? We are giving grants. So the so the so the, the vast piece in Kano. How many the Saludo give in Anambra State? We need a handsome person that knows the business. We don't need English speakers. This is my own stand on this. All right, and thank then you. my brother. Honorable Kizito Ikenna is already unmuted. Thank, thank you me. very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to talk about uh, Dr. Godwin Madoka. Dr. Godwin Madoka is from Umuchuku. And Dr. Godwin Madika is a triple professor who has done amazing things in Umuchuku. He has transformed uh, Umuchuku to uh, another city, almost a state in Anambra State. And his uh, blueprint represents effectively well that he is ready to transform Anambra State to a, a nation in Nigeria. He, he has established himself from his humble beginning to a worthy man in overseas, in the United States of America. This is a worthy man who has six hospitals running in America with all the deluge of uh, uh, regulations without any problems. And having achieved that feat, he has resolved to be, bring in some of those good connectivity of his paraphernalia of connections into Anambra to develop Anambra, to extend his magnanimity to every other local government in Anambra state, across the 21 local governments. You can see during the flood what it is to this Anambra North people. So far, so good. I want to assure us that if we should be fair to ourselves, this is not someone who was uh, hired or uh, masterminded to come and stand in as a stooge. He or his own volition has decided to run for the seat of the number one citizen in Anambra. 
And from all the incidents, I want to assure all of us that all things being equal, doing things accordingly and justly, if it becomes the next governor of Anambra State, Anambrarians and non-indigenous in Anambra, we have reason to glorify God. And that is what we are here for. We don't want to miss words with anybody. We don't want to talk about those people who were there in, the, in, in national faith, but never had anything to create employment in Anambra. We don't want to talk about anybody. We don't want to talk about this person or that person. We are focusing on Dr. Godwin Madaka, his ability, his capacity and capability to transform Anambra to a nation in Nigeria. God bless you. All right. That's a very succinct uh, presentation. Let's go to Augustine Ike, please. Tim, are you helping to meet people? Augustine okay, Ike, I have done that. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I've been doing that. Okay, um, please. Um, I just, um, the person that did submission on Soludo, I have a reservation. Am I free to point it out? Of course, it's a free speech, it's allowed. Good. Uh, uh, there is something I noticed that is consistent about Soludo. <coughs> the, the Togo Virari's picture and the ex munitions picture being painted about Soludo appears not to be factually correct. I have observed a reasonable degree of consistency a, the very act of always smuggling Soludo from behind. Soludo got to CBN from behind. He was not a staff, he was not a career banker. From Ugochukuba through Andioba to Abbasan John's bedroom, he was announced and given a particular tax to carry out consolidation. I do not think that that was his idea. He was just brought in to do the job through Andioba. Now, Soludo again in 2010 got to PDP primaries, truncated it, went back to Abuja and collected tickets and resurfaced that he's running for the election. So Lude again now in Abga, they are debating body language and every evidence has shown that he has paid him money so that others will not be allowed to participate in the primaries so that he'll be presented as a single candidate. Now, the big question I want to ask is, have we not observed that prior to appointment of Soludo into CBN, that he has not really distinguished himself in any field of life as a professor of economics? He is not known to have distinguished himself. I need him to point out something so succinct he has done as Professor Chukuma Charles Soludo, save that he was given a tax to carry out. Because Okonjuwal and other of his contemporaries have keep pointing to him as the worst governor. But I was expecting him since he left CBN that he ought to have done something that is so unique to show that this person on his own is creative, is intelligently creative. Because one could know book in the sense that he has grabbed book, he has crammed the book, he has known the technical terms, but he is incapable of creative thoughts. So the danger with Soludo is that I saw him as someone that was brought into CBN to cover certain tracks for Obasanjo et al. And I see him as somebody that is coming into Anambra with the sole function to cover the tracks of Obia, not using his technicalities. I do not see him giving us a clear-cut blueprint on grounds of competence of what he really wants to do. Because one of the true tests of competence is for one to be democratic. If he's very democratic, why then is he pressurizing and paying him so that he will not go into primaries with the like of Ewo Pudike, Emodi, and so smart or careful? Why is he being not democratic? So my own is that I do not share, in as much as I give it to him, that he must have gotten first class, he must have demonstrated intelligence as a person. I do not see him as someone who has the ability to create and make impact without being directed on what to do. I'm picturing right. him. Uh, if, if I may ask you this question, sorry, if I may ask you a question, there's been framework of economic uh, development and bank of financial consolidation when he was the CBN governor. And um, international organization, IMF and um, other financial institutions have really accredited, that's Professor Cholo Soludo, 
revalidated, reinterrupted, and built the Nigerian financial institution. Are you saying he served on due, zero correlation when he was the CBN governor and that he was very incompetent in our financial sector? In fact, considering what is happening now in the sector, financial sector, where our devaluation of Naira, where our currency have no validity, have no strength, compared yeah. to when Charles Soludo was there. Is that what your point is all about? No. The CBN governor, the CBN governor, do not forget, the CBN governor is an employee of the president. I said that there was a tax. The consolidation thing is not a brainchild of Soludo. Or Soludo should give us his papers. He's a professor. He should give us his 10 papers where he was writing about consolidation and its, its corollaries before he was called upon to serve his CBN to carry out such tax. Soludo has no clue into that field. He was only, the, the, there was a blueprint. He was only brought there to execute it. If he has written something on that before, a 10 paper or other things, let him present it. Let's see. I, what I'm trying to say is that he only came and carried out a job that was, there was a template and Ugo Chukuba, I repeat, Ugo Chukuba through Andy Uba brought him to do the job. So he was only nominated through the window to do the job. About three people, three professionals were already shortlisted. His name came in the 11th hour and Andy Uba took it to Obasanjo. What I'm trying to say, that was like, I'm not saying that he, he is not intelligent. I'm saying that he's being given undue credit. Now, because he was carrying out the tax, it is normal, since he's executing an existing tax, it's normal for international organizations to, uh, to recognize him. I now ask you a creative question. Now, this is the question. Since Soludo left the tiny individual, what has the international organized? That the devaluation of Naira is not solely responsible for the, for the, for the weight of Naira in international markets. What we are experiencing now is a, is, is a global, is, we can call it a global meltdown. Do okay. well, excuse me, don't you believe that global uh, circumstances? Uh, uh, excuse me, don't you believe that a, an impactful influence of, who, of whosoever that is the CBN governor can, as a matter of fact, influence the economic decision towards the devaluation of Naira, which Soludo was very, very perfect to seeing that our Naira had value then compared to what is happening now. Are you saying he cannot bring down such efficiency and proficiency if he is elected as a governor of an Anambra state? I am saying that I still maintain my ground that Soludo, that the value of Naira then at the time, the crude, there are a lot of things we check, okay? The value of Naira, in relation to other currencies and the value of other currencies in their country, we are moving at the same pace. What I'm saying is that Soludo did not do anything so spectacular. I'm telling you authoritatively that there was a blueprint. And the mistake we will make in Anambra is to think that making Soludo a governor, we, we make him work any spectacular miracle. Because I can say that he's not a good judge. He's not a good judge of econometrics. But with the comment he made when Obiano was running for second tenor, he told us, if it is not broken, do not fix it. And I said, the time he's telling us, if it is not broken, Obiano has exhausted our reserve. So what exactly was he telling us that he's not broken? Soludo is always being brought in to do a hatchet job. He is intelligent, but I see him as someone who uses his intelligence negatively, via negativa. So I'm seeing Soluda as someone who is coming to cover Obiano's ass. And that is why Obiano is struggling at all costs to make sure that he succeeds him. I'm not seeing Soludo as someone who has an independent program for Anambra State. It's not personal. It's just a, a critical observation. It's not personal. I like him. I like him. I like him as a person. But I am yet to see him as someone who has a... Okay, now, money was contributed for him to build his mother's memorial hospital. He claims, he claims, he claims that those who made the pledge to him as a CBN governor didn't redeem the pledge. Now, this is where we know a leader. Since the, the hospital is named after your mom. Uh, me? me? Me, Mr. 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 Chinedu Obiefuna. Yes. Please, um, can you 
Yes, I have. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Well, the, the thing is we're not here to uh, talk about the, I think that what, what we should focus on is uh, but you can't speak in Igbo very well. People may not understand. So for now, in case of Onyasuba, well, um, one thing that I need to tell our people is that we have had this kind of debate for far too long since Eju Mom. We've been having this kind of debate about you know um, the expectations of a you know a governor, president, and so on. At the end of the day, nothing positive happens. And let me tell us something. We're, we're missing the point again. Now, what I have observed about our people and governance is one, uh, you elect people who are competent, so, so to say, uh, as a matter of fact, somebody who is talking about Soludo, Soludo is qualified, he's done something. But the problem is, being able to make sure that the laws and order, the law and order in the state is maintained. The problem we have is that you see governors, you see presidents elected, but they don't have that political will to insist that the right things are done. It doesn't matter how qualified you are, you could have first class, but when you get in there, will you be able to look your brother in the face and say, this is not right. We need to do the right things. Every time we talk about EFCC, how many state governments, for instance, Anambra State, since 1999, does it mean that how many has Anambra State government actually taken to EFCC? How many? I just came back from Anambra State and I went to a hospital and this is supposed to be one of the best hospitals in, uh, in Anambra State. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm at the General Hospital, and I saw the chaos there. And the question I was asking myself is, where is the supervision? Does Anambra State government have people who supervise some of these things? I was driving in Oka, and there were potholes everywhere. There were trash everywhere. Who is responsible for supervising people doing stuff like this? It's not about getting elected. All these people, now, now, when they get in there, they'll be doing the same thing. How do you wake up in the morning as a governor and you don't ask your commissioner for health, commissioner for education, how things are going? You can elect anybody, an angel. He will get in there and not be able to supervise the ministries, supervise commissioners, and the thing. That's the right, difference uh, between... Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, yes, sir. The question yeah. is this. The, the question is this. Whom do you think amongst the candidates that is... I don't... I don't know. I don't... I don't know. Okay, what anybody is telling, you, anybody what? telling you that he knows is telling you the truth. You don't know. Okay. By That's their the footprint... Truth. By their footprint... What, 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 what's the relativity and capacity amongst these people? Because I know if you are to cast your ballot, you have somebody in mind. Oh, yeah, I do. You come up, yes. Now, tell us, I do. Who, who do you think or group of persons amongst these 26 candidates? Do you, and we are not here, uh -huh. gentlemen and ladies in the, in the, in the, in the studio, um, uh, we, uh, we are not here to castigate our honorable members and those right. who are buying for office. We are here only to initiate what is called um, classical assessment. Mm -hmm. The assessment is based on capacity. It is not based on deformation. It is not based on, on constructive criticism or attacks. Please, that is the information because this is the Lumba News and we don't use this platform to attack anybody. And the okay. question again to you, sir, is whom do you think or uh, all right. The, the, the near instinct of person whom you think that has the capacity or that should possess the capacity to lead in the number of states. Come well, November 2021, please. Yeah, let me, let me tell you. Well, if uh, uh, academic qualification um, and manifesto is anything to go by, I'll strictly, I'll strictly go with um, um, Soludo. Uh -huh. You cannot achieve anything without having something down for people to look at. All these other people, I haven't seen their manifesto. I don't know what they want to do. Talking about, you know, I know we don't want to go personal. I'm one of the contestants who has a, a football club. I learned that the players have been owed salaries. 
and there are a lot of mismanagement there. So if that's yes, can you call the name of the person, please. Everybody knows the if I know has a club. That's what I heard. It's not confirmed. Um, I wouldn't say it's true. But you know, yeah. I want somebody somebody not here who said that uh a representative. Can you clarify on some of those things? And then were a lot of debt issue, you know, issues with Coscaris and all those sorts. Can you tell us, you know, how such a person should be trusted to be the governor of an Ambra state? It's a moral burden. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about Madoka, like I said, you know, it's, it's not enough for you to be a medical doctor. And that's my problem with uh, medical doctors. My, bro my sister just died two weeks ago because of the system in Nigeria. You got to go? Um, the, place, the hospitals in Anambra State are not, are not being supervised to do the right things. Why is that? Why do we have so many medical doctors in the United States, many nurses in America, I, 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 Anambra nurses, and still we cannot boast of a standard, well-equipped, professional hospital in Anambra State? Why? That's not too hard. Okay? Then, um, Saludo, well, I don't know. Like I said, my challenge with somebody being qualified is Will he will have the will and capacity to do the right things at all times? Call your friend. If your brother is uh, inflating contract, will you be able to fire him and send him to EFCC? If we cannot protect, you know, uh, 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 the vulnerable, if we cannot, uh, you know, maintain law and all that, then we're not we're wasting our time. Can we go there back? Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Please don't go. We, we would like you to come back again on uh, on when this issue starts to high up so to say because you have some value so there are some points you've made and just to point out that issue i think it's this week that the cmd was it or not or the megojuku university died of covid19 if the cvd of anambra state's own university cannot be helped to survive he's not an old man you don't know whether he has any underlying sickness he just got cvd and there is no oxygen to help him to survive. Three weeks ago, another medical doctor died at the School University Teaching Hospital because there was no oxygen to give to him. So, like you rightly asked, it's not just about putting out policies out there. It's not just about building the infrastructure. But if there is no supervision, let's take P2B as an example. People always use P2B as how they have a touchstone for measuring other government. But let me point out something. Peter, you don't mention about why can't you use your commissioners to go and supervise those things? If there is a pothole on a road, why don't we, have the governor, will the governor have the balls to call the commissioner for roads or something? Why do we have, so if you don't use your commissioners, how does it work out? So these are some of the issues we have to talk about. So thank you very much. We'd like you to come back. Uh, Paul, if you allow me to call, uh, uh, Nick, Nick Nicholas, please. He's been there for some time now. Reason of the stand. Nicholas, yeah. all right. Yeah, thank, how, fine, thank you. Uh, I, I have a, I listened to the second to the last uh, speaker on Soludo, and uh, as much as uh, he made some very exciting points, but I, I think generally that um, these days when we talk about people that we are shortlisting for governance, with the the first thing we need to consider is does he have the executive intelligence? and executive capacity, you know, to do the job. Now, when you look at Soludo's uh, profile, especially during the consolidation era, yes, it could be given that it was a blueprint handed to him, but the fact is that he did execute it very well. And what do we mean well, when we say somebody has an executive capacity is the ability to manage people to achieve a set goal. Soludo has demonstrated, you know, that he has the capacity to do things. And, the man hasn't been quiet. I, I learned he has been integrated in uh, uh, a lot of uh, development work in a number of states, like uh, the vision, uh, uh, you know, that is uh, the, the 50 years plan of Anambra. I learned he's integrally, you know, uh, uh, embedded in that project. I, I, I think, if you ask me, I think if, if, if that, uh, that qualifies him more than any other person for now that I have seen among the, you know, the contenders as one of the best qualified persons so far, but again, I, we must be hit, we must equally not forget that uh, uh, that second to last speaker made a valid point about Soludo appearing, you know, giving the impression that uh, he's there to do some hatchet job. Because I, I, I recall that uh, in the run up to 2015, 
you know, I, I read a lot of his write-up on the economy. The, his, the write-up, uh, you know, he had on Jonathan. And I equally know, too, because I, I was a business intelligence reporter at that time, uh, that uh, he, uh, himself and Ngozi okonjo Wala did not enjoy the best relationship. And a lot of players in the industry, a lot of political ones will tell you that it is more of ego, you know, intellectual ego on, on the sides of both of them. You understand? Uh, she being the Minister of Finance and he being the CBN governor, the monetary regulator. You know, so I, I think those are some of the things we need to interrogate too. We need to interrogate that thoroughly to see if some of this issue might crop up. And we need to put it across to Soludo himself, personally. And raise some of this issue, let, it put, let him put the mind of, you know, people who are looking up to him to rest. That is just a, a, my contribution for now. Thank you. All right, come. thank you very much. Let's call the next person, please. All right, um, please, um, gentlemen, I would like us to, even if, if, if you have someone in mind, we have um, um, Dr. Obiora Okonkwo. Do you have anything to say over his candidacy and competence? Please, anybody in the house? Dr. Obiora Okonkwo as the governor of Abia, uh, Anambra State. There are people raising up their hands, call them. Let's see what they have to say. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you loud and clear, sir. please. Thank you very much. Let me first of all commend Elomba TV and the moderators and the brains behind this wonderful initiative. This is the kind of discourse we must encourage so that we'll begin to get close to what we need as a people to develop. Even, even, even I am saying thank you to Elomba TV. You people have done wonderfully well. Please let us sustain this discourse. Uh, my, my desire is to see that we move away from the mundane when we are doing elections. It is saddening that the average person in Nigeria still sees election as an opportunity to get something to eat. I wonder how many years the 20, 30, 100,000 people run about to collect during this period will last compared to the formation in terms of infrastructure and other areas of governance that we suffer over the years of malgovernance or misgovernance when we put the wrong people in place. Most of these people, or let me say, all these people who want to run or who want to be governors have excelled in one area or the other. I give it to every one of them. As a matter of fact, before somebody gets up and say, I want to govern a state, I want to be a local government chairman, I want to be president, the person must have thought about something going on that he wants to impact in the state or in the nation. So I commend them. Nonetheless, we should be looking at what is a 21st century state supposed to be when we are talking about who qualifies or not. They are all qualified. They have all done well in their individual capacity. So we can't run anybody down. We commend them. But the truth must be told that may everyone runs in a race, but some will win. In a race, all run, but some run to win. What we need now, just not in Anambra, but in Nigeria, is how to create the enabling environment to sustain good economy that we create jobs, that we empower the people, that we generate knowledge. Because it's not about road that you tie today, one rain or two, we flush it out. Everybody coming out to tell us, I will tie road, I will tie road, I will build house. It is mundane. We don't have culture of maintenance. If roads were to be something so wonderful that once you tie it, it will stay and you have a culture of maintenance. What Ngige did when he was governor would have kept Anambra going as per roads up till now. Where are those roads? Some of them, you can't even pass them anymore. That is how mundane it is for people to be telling us about road and all that. There is something greater than road 
that when that is done, road will become maintainable, sustainable, and it will be there year in, year out. Afterwards, you travel overseas. What do we go there to do? I raise my shoulder. All right, sir. Will, uh, excuse, sorry, sir. Um, to cut everything short, we have seen the characteristics um, you have so far mentioned for a person who is buying to become an Ambra State governor, as in to succeed the incumbent governor, William Obiano. What I want you to do is to give us a comparative analysis of the personality traits and capacity amongst the people contesting. Who do you think among them that is more competent? Because I know you are going to vote and you will vote your yes. function. Yes, Who let me do you think that say. can lead an Ambra State to the next level, sir? Thank you very much, sir. Even Natwanya guide our move forward, Bo. Kedu Onye Welike Iji Koifo Megolo. Well, with the economic power, Nanambra State. Now, bro, just this, okay, near a low hospital. As election, a kelly who's on our board, my cake, a low eke. Ofonye, who no fuaku, onye, does only no kunaku cause And onye, who no fuaku, Professor Soludo, does only no kunaku kundozo. Bundi no go bambo. Meta kwa nifa fulanya. Na they are private businesses and areas of industry. O eme go fuma. Fano no fuwa uko. Professor Soludo enwe go experience. Onwe ta mbo ono na CBN. We enwe necessary linkages. Makine ekwo okwi ime po obodo obu i ekwo okwi fe enye la ka ke we me empower the people obu na go na go ndi mmadu ine ekwo okwi ni yata road after one rain the road apwa epoku onye oza bia kwa you have not developed this, this state who has the necessary linkages to attract because of obu individual money ka eji a billionaire cannot use his money to develop an ambra state you must have the international linkages to attract necessary investment. Today, I na he kuku hate him or love him. Very soon, I am web he felt fly into an Ambra state. See no airport, I my friend, I don't care who is the governor. I was you move away from pettiness and hatred. We are passing. No chan echo maka next generation. I put ever an H if a boxala lini na man lini. Ke if I abu umwai if I abu tomorrow umwai in the next 50 years. If we don't develop our state with capacity, road aita alokita with this kind of inferior materials I need me noise na campaign. Or gas sustain in the next five years. So Ludo and we go the linkages. Whether he did whatever he did in CBN. Let us critique objectively. Kedife Mwiki make an umbrable an international economic hub. That is what will give us jobs. American dream do because they open their market. You can improve your life. I will the knowledge in technology, an umbra state. If they need you somebody with international linkages to create. I mean, economic hub, Nanambra. And the Chineke Nyegaka, he was thrown into that position. Anyhow, it is a benefit to go from there. And we cannot remove from the fact that all these people now the election. Also, and we go such opportunity. If I need to know why, okay, today, Okonji Wala is WTO. She was thrown up. By circumstances. Oh, we call we are Makale Madi Chanao. But circumstances troll her up and the opportunity came. Everybody said, okay, let her take it. Even now, yonder an umbrani election now. Eku go kwa moya can do esin and kene kwa n dini nana zono. Fan che me go kwa fu mani bedi chiche. Mana ekwe si easy from it, eta road ni iwa kumili. Gato e create an economic hub in an umbra state. Which the airport is part of the, the thing. If we have seaport, well, I mean, where we can move our materials in, we begin to look at how to make Nigeria, even if it's not like Dubai, like China. Arthur Chibeze, please. 
Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the privilege to um, talk in this meeting. I'm in quite a somewhat dark place. Um, kudos to Elomba TV for this um, wonderful opportunity to uh, interact with very, very intelligent minds. Uh, especially concerning the politics of Anambra State. Um, first of all, you know, Anambra State politics, Abro Obelife, is actually a tough one and um, is, is, a, is a war of intellectuals. Uh, there's actually nobody who comes out for politics who hasn't considered him or herself um, capable of uh, handling the leadership as it were. Uh, but then uh, we've had a history of um, bad leadership, not in the sense that um, the person who is in the hem of affairs is a personal, has a bad personality or has a bad personality trait, but uh, you could see this in the mismanagement of resources and a whole lot of uh, wrong decisions. Um, but then you discover that since you're talking about characteristics and the principles that makes one or that can show that one can actually govern an Ambra state. You find that in Willow, or to piece again, Egalanya, there are a lot of things that need to be paid attention to. And an Ambra state, as it were, has been, you know, Obunewi, if you look at the media, the media hype of an Ambra state, the hype of Unewi, the hype of Onicha, you know, Onicha is the biggest market in the West Africa, and a whole lot. Uh, you discover that there are so many things which are supposed to have been in this state which are not kept here. And then when you look at these aspirants as well, you come also to discover that so many of these aspirants have been, they've been in leadership for years. Not just been in leadership manner, far no go in positions that they've been exposed to be, they've been in positions that they could have made lasting change. They, they could have attracted important projects. They, they would have made moves. In fact, most of the aspirants that we have and the candidates, uh, depending on the situation of the person and the party of the person, is or create a lasting impact in Anambra State. But unfortunately, the reverse has been the case. So each year we have the same crop of persons coming out. It's like we are, we are recycling. It's like when you look at the, the technology of recycling, you're recycling something, the system is rotating, it rotates, it recycles the same thing all over and all over again. So I think now, as far as an Ambra state politics is concerned, we need something that is out of the norm. All right, Mr. Mr. The... Mr. 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 Chubese, we have had your um, yes. assertion saying, yeah. what well, we, the specific yeah. question at this point in time is um, you are yeah. you are you have okay. of candidacy. Who do you think that is that messiah that can okay. lead Anambra State to the next level come 2021 20, November of this year? Okay, this 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 is this is simple. If you've been following the Anam, hello, am I free to talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the best candidate that is hello, coming? Can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah, can okay. hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I won't waste your time. Um, when you look, well, if, you, if, if you're very conversant with the media and the narrative, uh, it's obvious when you, if you're really, really into the media, you would have heard of Valentine in the book. Now, there are so many reasons, apart from the media aspect, why I made mention of Valentine in But let, let, me, let me start from the immediate, and I'll go to the past record. Now, Valentine Osbo has the competency. You know, a, a speaker made mention of certificate, qualification, international exposure. Um, I sit on the authority to tell you that um, it is not just Mr. Saludo who has those qualities. When you take a deep uh, a research, when you look deep into Mr. Valentine Osbo, I've gone through his CV, I've gone through his records. Mr. Valentine Osbo is not just an international personality. He is the most decorated black man in the whole of Africa, in the whole world, not just Africa. He is a member of 
the mm-hmm. Ashley uh, of CEO, seven star CEO. He's a world class CEO, internationally recognized. He is the only promoter of freestyle football in the whole of Africa. Now, we are talking about uh, Fit and Six, to which he empowers a whole lot of people. Now, when you talk about Valentine, well, you talk about banking, financial institutions. We understand, of course, that Saludo is a World Bank, but I'm not just, I'm not trying to compare these two personalities. They are two distinct persons who have told two different paths. But look at what I'm trying to draw an analogy to. Valentine Ozubo has the required capacity internationally and locally. He has had a record of management of billions of billions of funds. Now he handled the renovation of transport building, both the one of Lagos and the one of Calabar, and the extensions. When you look at the excellence that comes from in transport building, you mentioned the man Valentino Zubo. Now a whole lot of people have made a whole lot of comments about him being uh, a hotel, a non working AC hotel. But that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Whatever business you are into, whatever industry you are into, leadership at some point needs to be deployed. And leadership determines success. So moving away from that, Valentino Zubo is somebody that wherever you see him talk, he talks about the culture of continuous improvement. And that is a culture that we lack in this part of the world. What is continuous improvement? It simply means challenging the status quo. If this thing was done this way yesterday and it did not work, even if it works, what is that other way that we can do? What is that other thing that we can do to achieve a different and better result? And that is what this man brings to the table. So it's not about who is qualified. It's not about who has done it over and over and over again. It is about who has determination and the resolve. Okay, it's all right. Okay, sir. Ben, Ms. this Benz. I don't know whether that's your real name. You, you complain that you've raised up your hand for some time now. So let's hear from you. Uh, I don't want them there, man. Uh, go, go ahead, Good evening to everybody. Um, Good evening. I'm going to I'm I'm not here to actually, uh, you know, give any long speeches because Okwan uh, Ekwu is a very serious one. So here, could it go straight to the point? We fought you. Can they also make it on Okwan? The other doctor I find about is the best man for this job, and all the very, very simple. From the capacity to the dexterity, and of course the capability as a human being, uh, his his records half lanya. is a question of his way, bro. a question of his can tie. A bro, a question of his stethoscope. A bro, a question of add so many prefixes and suffixes to the name. Oto no go buibu. We've seen that number, Nuju. And I put it to you, no more a governor at Nigeria, where a CV, they half as rich as Chimu Kemba, Nuju of Anambra State. I'm with Fomelai. We, we, I shot after one of the workers. So I, for one, I'm not interested. Because also, remember, in fact, you know, we're during my school days. So I have to get things, so go to go. But I really don't pay much heed to that. I look at you as a person. Can you feel Tana for your people? Can you feel Tana for Gonanya? From Anambra over to Nigeria, over to Africa. Senator so, Dr. Patrick Fireba is a name who operate a name with Wasigonye. Nobody will say that. Everybody knows the name. Simply because he has been there. Beat politics, beat sports, beat healthcare. And Anambra State, I for two world class edifices or put or medical center. You go there, you see it. Now he was able to governize. Over 200, 80, as, as over 200, and more than billionaires and millionaires, no foreign umbrella for people who doubt his credibility and his integrity index. They put in their money 5 million, 10 million, 1 billion, what have you. And then they, they raised up over half a billion naira, put all of these two, these two edifices within the space of one year. He did that himself. So I put a question of Nonya Pledge, you know, or, or, or what they go. No, you can see that for yourself. Now, a while back, somebody made mention of the football club. Yes, it's a thing of pride because we're looking towards diversification in Anambra State as a means of increasing our GDP. There, that we need to move away from modern things. I agree with that. The world is actually talking about uh, relying less on oil, which I also agree. And in England, they've invested so much in sports, particularly football. It's the same thing in the US, which is why the MLS has been advertised all over the world and tried to attract people. China invests heavily in football. You can see people like Oscar earning as much as 600,000 pounds 
There are people in China that aim more than Messi or Ronaldo. But that, that's what it is, because they know the revenue that comes from those things. And who else in our state understands sports? Brother, said that the party gives value, but not only if we're not, he has invested his money, over seven billion and counting, into this particular sector. And for those who know a question of owing or not owing, I want to refer you to the status and regulations of the LMC. That's the League Management Company of Nigeria, who, who oversees the MPFL, the Nigerian Professional Football League. He simply states, a player that has been owed for a, a maximum of 90 days has the right to terminate his contract. And a player who, who is owed for more than 90 days can also appeal to the NFF or FIFA and also sue the club to court. Now, King Wedge FIFA, has any player come up to file a lawsuit against the club in question? I leave it to you to answer because most of you in the event, I'm a passport. I'm a sports media consultant in case. Uh, okay. Of okay. Yeah, Ob 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 Ajolo, please. Uh, thank you, Eloba, for the show. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Hello. Yes. Yeah, you are awesome. right. So, my take is that uh, it's high time we begin to find somebody that is brought up in this local economy, not dropping all these big names. Those names haven't helped us, have it? Paul, has those big names helped us before? They haven't. If you look at Chris and Paul, you see someone that understands the local economy. This is what we need in this sector. This is what is going to create lasting empowerment for the massive unemployed youth roaming the street. Most of us are unemployed, and we have a number of gas reserves in Anambra State. And Chris Asbog understands this. He is creating industrial parks in Indewi, Ozobolo, Aziz. In Mallorca, Aziz, where I come from, he is not representing that side. But still, he is connecting the economy to that side, through ICT. These are what functions, not building Bogos airplane. Uh, E.K. was saying that Soludo building a big institution. Road is very, very important. And you see that Chris has spoke takes road construction very seriously. My brothers, we have to start from elementary one before we go to secondary school or high institution. China, we are studying, America that we are studying, they first quench hunger. And to quench hunger, you have to connect all your cities with road. That's part of the problem Nigeria is suffering today. You can imagine in the first century, Nigeria didn't connect all the states with on rare. That's part of the hunger we are suffering. You can't do business. Chris understands road infrastructure. He understands rail infrastructure, water infrastructure, ICT, commerce and industry. These are where we have power. Toludo should pursue academic works, just like Ngozo Konji is pursuing. He should go to schools and answer prof. Um, uh, I want to even, as I've been writing it on, on the comment section, he should only answer prof in the school, not uh, in the field. We are in the field. So what we are looking out for is somebody that understands. You see what uh, Peter did when you were He understands the professor. local economy. <laughs> being a professor doesn't translate. Many professors have run down many institutions. You can go to Cross River and check what is happening there. It's run by a professor. Even during the coronavirus, he couldn't manage it very well. We had some comments he made, even though he's a professor of, uh, I think, biology. So what we are saying is that it's high time we jettison uh, those uh, prefaces and all what we are. We go for people who have character. So Ludo was uh, uh, asked to build the uh, Mbapo Memorial Hospital. He couldn't do it. It was been a legacy project for him. And somebody that, after serving as CBN governor, left the country to United Kingdom, shows that he doesn't have a stake. He has a little or no stake in this state. 
So you know that you are thinking lies with where you are. His thinking is about UK. Let those who are in this Anambra determine what happens in this Anambra. Those who know their character. In fact, it should be in part of our maybe rules that people that have not stayed up to five, ten years shouldn't run for any elective position. Because these people are the ones that understand how things are run. If Anyoba shouldn't be talking about any, he should go and concentrate on running his uh, uh, firms. He has many issues with EFCC, with his staffs, and uh, so those chapter if Anyoba should uh, tell him to go and run. Okay, so we need we um, to push him to go and let those who understand the economy run. I also even prefer Ezemo if uh, uh, Chris is not going. There are people that have run their businesses very well. These people will also try, even in trying to enrich their business, they will enrich everyone. Thank you. All right, we thank you. Um, Nicholas, please. All right. Um, well, I, I want to speak on somebody that I think is equally exciting. And that happens to be Ufuta Kidoka. Uh, I know earlier I spoke about the uh, Lugo and uh, I spoke about his pedigree. I, you know, what, what really attracts me in candidates, you know, running for an elective office is that uh, I look at people who have less baggages, less political baggages, even though they have been players within the political terrain. And Osita Chidoka strikes me as a very, very good candidate too, you know, uh, because when you look at, you know, look at his trajectory, you know, the offices he handled, you know, you see a lot of excitement, you see a lot of vigor and vim that he brings into the office. Then I, I watched keenly his last, um, you know, the last, uh, uh, the last, uh, you know, his last campaign uh, when he came under UPP, I, I believe. You need to see the kind of campaign he ran. He ran an, a, a campaign based on idea. He was able to galvanize the youth population, and you need to. The, 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 the fact is, you can't even you can't even fault some of the policy pronouncements the guy made. So for me, I think that is equally an important uh, aspect too. And you know, there is something about Anambra State that really excites me. You know, of all the states, you know, in the country, Anambra excites me more, and I'll explain the reason why. For me, I think Anambra is about the only state we have in the country where critical stakeholders at some point came together and decided that whoever must rule Anambra must have, must have certain quality. And that started with Peter Obi. And we can see the translation of that decision in the kind of development you have under Peter Obi. You know, so I, I, I have been following, even though, well, there has been a lot of controversy about Obi, but if, you give, if I have to say my take on it, I think he hasn't done too badly. You understand? So, we need that kind of continuation. And what marks these men out were that they had no political baggages, you know, from what I can see, from the if you profile them both politically and the rest of them, they don't, they don't come into the office with baggages. So when you talk of Ifan Yuba, I, I, I read, you know, talking about his uh, players asking for money, said he fought his elements and things like that. Okay, how does he explain owing uh, his workers in uh, authority newspaper. You know, this was a paper that was there for less than two years. I'm not sure he even paid a one-year salary stretch. And we have seen smaller outfits that have done wonderfully well, you know, uh, within that same period. So, you see, at some point, you know, what they say he has, most of what they say he, he does, I can't measure it in terms of fiscal you know, uh, fiscal and business profiling. I, it can be measured very well. You hear a lot of controversies, you know, owing money to Costaris, EFCC calling him here and there and things like that. That kind of a man should not be brought in to run an office as far as I'm concerned. That is my opinion about it. So, but then when we talk about these other candidates we have spoken about, Soludo on the one hand, then Osita Chidoka, you know, he has, he has a youthful vigor on his side. He has, he has understood it, very, you know, good politician over the years. 
and he has been consistent in his policy thrust, what he thinks, what he believes. He's been so consistent about it. And you see the you see the passion in him. So I, I think it's somebody what I'm, it's not as if I'm conversing, but I think that we haven't been speaking much about people like this. People that I think are the future of a state like Anambra. Thank you. Can I say something real quick? Yes. Yeah, yes. please. Yeah. Um, Miko, let me let me make this uh, a very important point. I've heard a lot of people talk about education, uh, not about people speaking English. In a society in this present a time that doesn't value education is a, a society that is doomed to fail. When you consider countries that are progressing, developed countries, they value education. They have the best education. When the president of America wants to appoint people as advisors, they go to hire professors, professors of, you know, Harvard and others. That's the kind of people that they hire because they understand the importance of education. So let's stop all this idea of our not by speaking English and other. Yes, people can fail. It doesn't matter. But I prefer someone who is educated than the, somebody who is not as educated. Okay, we're not saying that, you know, uh, 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 there's any particular person that's not that educated, but that comment should, is a tragedy to make it that kind of statement. And again, I've talked about establishment. Anybody can establish anything. Anybody can award contract. Anybody can uh, build hospitals. The problem is, are they working? How is the management? That's the key thing. Thank we run you, a country of contracts, build Very this, build on. that. But the key thing is, how is it managed? Is it being supervised to work? All these excuses about uh, non-payment or salary is unacceptable. If you owe people one day, you know, if you live in an advanced country, nobody, if you stay here 20 years, 30 years, nobody will ever tell you that they've been owed for one day. So owing salary for one day is, is a ground for actually disqualifying anybody for contesting in your private firm. So if you are owing people in your private establishment and want us to believe that you will not owe people when you are actually elected. That's not acceptable, okay? So please, um, my thing is supervision, having somebody who can supervise those that he's employing to do the work. Otherwise, nothing is gonna work. That's what I'm saying. That's the problem with Africa, Nigeria, and Anambra State. All right, thank you. Uh, Francis Okoye, please, two minutes. Yes, uh, good evening, gentlemen. Um, I don't need to start by running any candidate down because that's not the essence why we are here. We are here to talk about Anambra State, our future in the next four or in the next eight years that the incoming governor, whoever he is going to be or she's going to be, that will hold sway as our chief executive. Now, looking at the litany of candidates, I think uh, the only two people that you can say that are really qualified to rule an Anambra State is Senator Dr. Patrick Ifanyo and uh, 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 what's his name again? This man that uh, Ezemo, Godwin Ezemo. Uh, these are the only two people who have really shown the Anambra Chinkum philosophy. These are people who have used their private firms to employ thousands of Anambrarians, thousands of Igbo people in their firms. These are, uh, in, if I buy in particular, is a man who has used his wealth of experience, his expertise, his uh, 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 ingenuity in business to manage his capital oil and other firms that he has uh, uh, he had uh, sway as the uh, managing director or chief executive and run those companies perfectly well. He has done well as a private individual. This is a man who has a business sense, Senator Dr. Patrick Ifanyo. But, and the number is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a state that we need somebody who has that business sense to govern. Anambra said is a state where most of us are into business, commerce. So we need somebody who has that business sense, who can be able to use his ability, the capacity and competence to mobilize men and resources. What is governance? Governance is all about ability and capacity to mobilize men and resources for the good of all, for the good of the state. And Anambra said, what we need now is that person who has that capacity. If I, by using Anambra State Progressive uh, Development Progressive Union, which he convened in the last one year, was able to put up two modern hospitals in Anambra State in a space of four months. 
if he was able to galvanize and mobilize Anambra billionaires and millionaires, about 400 of them, for them to be able to do this within just a space of four months, that means he has that capacity to mobilize our men and resources for our own good. That is number one. Then number two, see, we are talking about educational qualification. If you are not a professor, you are not qualified to be our governor. If you are not, I, I don't think anybody has said if you are not a professor. Somebody, somebody mentioned about Soludo being the most qualified because he's a professor. That's where I'm going. Now, I'm you not sure he's, over, no, you no, I'm not sure he I'm, said. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure he remember said. Remember, you gave me two minutes. I I'm want not to sure he, no, I'm minutes. not sure he said it because he's a professor. Let's stick to the facts. Uh, uh, he, yeah, okay, somebody okay. simply emphasized. Somebody simply said, "Let us not de-emphasize education." So okay. you can okay. continue. Okay, now yeah. the fine about we are talking about is a final year law student of a university in a base university in Abuja. That one apart, whether education or near education, if I about during the last debate of 2013 governorship election, was almost declared the winner of that debate because of his intellectual acuity, his ability to prove to us that whether education or not education, he has that intellectual capacity. He has proven that he has all it takes intellectually to be our governor. This is a man who, at the age of 23, was able to manage his company, if the capital oil and gas, to a point of envy before political uh, uh, gladiators came into the company. And uh, all we are now hearing uh, about bad news. So we don't need to run any anybody down. What we are saying, I say, is that Senator Dr. Patrick Ufayan, but within the one year, six months he has stayed as a senator, has proven that he is able and capable to become our state, state chief executive if elected. So if we give such a person a chance, because this man is a man who has a stake in Anambra State, what are those stakes? Most of his companies, Capital Oil and Gas, uh, 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 Authority FM, Authority Radio, Authority Television, if FC Fireball Football Club, and the uh, stadium that is worth more than 15 billion that he built in a Newi or Zobolo. These are the, to show that he has that interest of Anambra at heart, that he has a stake in this state. So if he's given the opportunity to become our chief executive, he will be able to pro pro protect not only that his personal uh, business, but those business of other Anambrarians and Igbo peoples in Anambra state. That is the stake we are talking about. Who right. else are among all these people, apart from Ifan Yoban, Dezemo, that have those business interests in Anambra state? So to Thank me, you. those... Yeah. So who muted you? I, I, I'm sure I didn't mute you. I don't know who muted you. Maybe your network fell out. But I think you made that point. Let's get some. Let's go to someone else. This program is not only about if I your band uh, Saludo, please. I think uh, um, Sir Ikemi Wodike is here. I can see he's raising up his hand. Let us hear from him, please. Sir Ikemi Wodike. Okay. Um. Good evening, everyone. Let me apologize for joining a little late. I got involved in another meeting, um, and um, that is why I joined a little late. I just wanted to find out from um, the convener and um, the moderator if this uh, uh, convergence is all about trying to promote it. That's one exception. I was thinking that um, under governance index, our take would have been to look at what we expect from the candidates and then play less about trying to advocate but, uh, or make advocates about the particular candidate or not. Some of the opinions um, have been expressed here are not wholly the truth, but um, I think. Uh, I personally think that um, what we should be concentrating on is will be what we want uh, from people who are presenting themselves and how do that deliver good uh, democracy to an Anambra people. Kobi um, is a candidate I have known for quite some time. He worked for about 34 years in the NMPC and retired as the MD of NMPC Capital. He is a chartered accountant and um, have both local and national exposures. Within, within the 34 years, he worked for seven years in NMPC London office, for two years in NMPC France office, and for a year in um, NMPC office in Milan, 
before he came back to Nigeria, worked in brass LNG for about five years, and then moved to Napims, where he worked uh, in the treasury of um, treasury office of Napims, which is the main mainstay of NNPC, and then before he retired as the MD of NNPC Capital. He's also a man of integrity and he has presented himself for consideration to a number of people in this race. I have been going about um, presenting himself and he has depth, depth of knowledge in public management and then in administration. And I think um, he, 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 he will have my support. And I'm also trying to present him for consideration of this August um, uh, body who are convened here. Thank you. Okay, please, Patrick Obina, SDIM, or write it PAZO, P A Z O. Okay, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody, and good evening in Africa. Go ahead. Afamobo, Patrick Obina, SDIM. I like to introduce myself. I money lead we in Hong Kong. Uh, I like this program because this program is all about the progress of an Anambra State. I thank all of you for being in this program. I don't uh I don't know for you book and work out even get rancher. You both tantra them, or you both tantra them. Uh I'm known on at least 80% in the bar on the Anambra State. Uh, I level of Soludo internationally, okay, I'm I question an and take your Soludo to go. My first question to you, my first question on that would be Do you believe in democracy? Yes. Thank you. Number two, it's not about to only I want a company, only I want a company. Everybody will not have a company. Those people who have company, those who have company, they are business enterprises. Soludo was one time the back of Nigeria. And I won't go in Nigeria and they benefit the work of Soludo in Nigerian banking. It's in the benefit to the work of Soludo in the Nigerian Bank, Marani will know for her. And if Soludo can make Nigerian Bank standard till today, it means that Anam practice okay, many quest standard. Before Soludo became the governor of Central Bank, oh no, oh, some banks run Rodan. I go to Mado Bara first man, I won't hear me to do them when I get up. Mana Soludo Batrado Zakoka Hakus to go today. And it has up to 10 or 15 years to the left central bank till now. The bank can be born. You can make transactions anywhere you are as far as you are using Nigerian bank. So no joke, I'm gonna soon wear on this thing or an ambarians wear this thing. Bono solute ball on prof. It's not about being a professor. But to tell us to come as Soludo, that's a Ryan Ambra State to visit China Grand Bank. I had some people say, How many people come and employ? Thank you. I like that question. That question of the thread. If you go to the name of tribalism, it don't qualify on the goro. The problem we have in Nigeria is tribalism. We know that you are one year. I want my brother on our governorship election. I'm going to money and so good. I got to number. I'm going to have a flashback. How many little in here are local government and Ambra State? Mbadunuju was our neighbor, only Willie. Mbadunuju, I may be little no. Only better make zero little. Only a lot who greeting and the pito I don't mind the bonus. If salute like for now, all these candidates I've seen, the best qualified candidate. Forget about the educational qualification. Is Charles Soludo. Seconded by Chris Atubog. God bless you. Mm. Okay, thank you. Chooks Ozibo, please. Don't go out to do the Chooks Ozibo, please, make your point. 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry I've been driving, so I've been in a meeting and then um, entered the steering, and that's it. Uh, let me put on my video so you can see me. Um, so I'm in the car and I saw what's going on. Uh, quickly, um, a lot of people have spoken quite well promoting your various candidates, but the question is what do we really need from the Anambra state government? What kind of a person do you want to be your next governor? What are the qualities of leadership that we are lacking in Anambra? Kedifai Cholo, Obmodo, Kedu Junior Gabobo, Governor Anambra State, and with tendency to do well. You see, the answers to these questions are very clear. You know, it's not just about Inwe capacity to award contracts or whatever. If you even look at that, who will even do it transparently? Because uh, virtually every state in Nigeria, some people have said it is not by education. Well, um, but education is very important, but it's not the only well, the reason why you should make somebody your governor. Um, if you even look at it, you have the best of you are a prof, you are this, that. Nigerian universities, how many of them are up to the, How many of them are doing well? Have they been able to? Profs are vice chancellors of every university in Nigeria. Tell me one single public institution in Nigeria that you can be proud of. You know, so having said that, my um, I, I'm only going to have for one thing. Only one a good governor must have a good dose of emotional intelligence. You know, it's somebody that will be able to galvanize people, to move people, be able to bring Anambra State together. Our polity have polarized us so much that even people will be thinking the absurdities as the reality, the way things should be. That's not the kind of state we should be building. We should be looking at somebody who has the capacity to bring Anambra together. We have a lot of billionaires in Anambra State. How do you bring them together Organize, in an organized way that they can bring in investment, they can float, they channel their energy, their resources into developing Anambra State? You have proper PPP arrangement. You have things working in addition to government funding. You know, so you put a right mix together. People, resources, materials. And then who will do this? Valentine took over an institution that was living on government subvention. They acquired it, it took over. In a single year, they started paying government dividend in addition to other private investors. And then every single space where he has operated, he turned around the institution. He's a turnaround master. He's a household name in the corporate environment. Somebody that's have over close to 2,000 staff and pay salary every single day and Put, turn around the institution, make everybody happy. So you have to, you have to be looking at individuals, people, somebody that have experienced. Valentine has it. And it's somebody that is, despite his achievement, is very humble. You bring your difficulty, your, your challenges, the challenging situation in every organization. As you are extending it to Val, he is giving you this solution. I'd be marveled. So these are the kind of people that you, if you talk about international connection, Val at is somebody that shake hands with over 30 world leaders. I'm not talking about uh, ministers. I'm talking about presidents of countries. Talk about them. Various world leaders from Europe, from Africa, from America. He shook hands with all of He has met many of them. He hosted the World Economic Forum for Africa, the only time it ever held in Africa. You know, so you'll be talking about people that can bring about changes. He is not a traditional person. He is, when I say traditional person, he's not somebody that lives on status quo. I don't mean traditional as in our own base. Traditional instance that they don't, he obrooni yoga rabia, ne etu akese me here, abia ba wa Q on the line, and maybe like that. No, Val is going to interrogate every single step and begin to bring about changes. That's the kind of person he is. All right. Val is somebody that is willing to put in every single dot of energy and sweat it takes to turn right. around an Ambra state. And he is already on the march. Look, listen to his campaign. His campaign is totally different from what others are doing. Very clean, honest campaign. He's not the one of the type that come and start making bogus promises. And beyond that, he's not, he's not the richest, but he has been impacting on lives in an Ambra with his own personal resources. He has foundation 
during the COVID, he did a whole lot. It was him that even started it before other politicians started following his footsteps. Go and check the track record. He's been there. And in Anambra State now, he's almost the household name. So let us give our support. And he's also young. We keep talking about the future, the leaders of tomorrow, the future of Anambra, and then we're going back to give it to the old men. Let's try younger people who have who are tested, who are trusted, who has the capacity to deliver. All right, Mr. Chuks, uh, Mr. Chuk, apart from him, uh, can you also remember another person? We have them who are so he is your best choice. Do you have another second choice or third choice in your analysis recommendation? Valentine is the choice for Anambra State. There's only one governor. You don't have one governor, and one person governor, then the next person waiting for him. No, there's only one person that will be a governor. And that person, I urge every single person here to support Valentine Ozdibo. Thank you. Let's go on. I thought we get in the Okoli Ebo, please. OK, uh, thank you very much. I don't know if. Uh... I'm being copied. We are, we are hearing you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I want to thank everybody, especially the last, uh, second to the last speaker that talked about Val. His points are very valid. But uh, I listened carefully to the submissions of uh, everybody. I want to say something. Let us not be carried away by paper qualifications. Uh, before I left, because I had to go and attend to an urgent call. Somebody was talking about Soludo and he kept saying, I don't know. He doesn't have verified information. Oh, if I knew that was, I heard the football club, he owed uh, players. I heard about debts. It's not about hearsay. So my submission is simple. Let us go for someone that's been tested, that's been trusted. Among all this, who has invested more in Alhambra? What is the social collateral that you have to place on the ground? I listened to Ifai speak two weeks ago over the radio. He said, if I do not fulfill some of these promises, go and bomb my stadium, go and bomb my uh, radio station. He has investments that you can count on. He has been tested, he has been trusted. He's in the Senate and he's doing marvelously well. We are not looking for a perfect person because nobody is perfect. Everybody here, I do not have anything in my you know, cupboard or I'm a perfect person. There's no perfect person. We are not looking for a, a Pope to come and be our governor. We are looking for somebody with integrity, somebody that's got character, somebody that we can point to the things that may go. My brother Kulo Kuibazu talked about foundation values about what he has done. If I knew about his verifiable record of philanthropy, even though it's not about philanthropy, you know, to good governance, to make a good governor. It's not about what you've done or the philanthropy that you've been able to do. No, it's about strength of character, the capacity to deliver on the job. Because as a governor, pressure will come from left, right, and center. The religious leaders will come. Traditional leaders will come. Every other person will come and say, oh, we want this. We want this done. Will you have the strength to stand and say no? We need a governor that will galvanize support amongst these other four states in the southeast. We are led back in Anambra, in the southeast, in the polity of Nigeria. Anambra is nowhere to be found again. This is the same Anambra that there's not there's a Kiwi bequeathed to us. Michael Oparadem. So we are looking for a, such a leader with capacity that will say, this is it. And the people being able to inspire people. Look at what they find is doing with the Anambra progressives. Two standard ultra modern health facilities is, has been built just by bringing people together and say, let, including Val. Some of these aspirants also contributed money. So let's look for that leader that can inspire. I saw Val and if I, in a picture, in a, a function in here, I was, you know, I was amazed to see the friendship, the bond. Who is that leader that will be able to galvanize and, you know, pull all these people together and say, let's go make Anambra great again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, Golo, please. Okay, excellent evening, everybody. Um... I'm His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Justin Okechuku Kingland. I'm speaking from Turkey, Istanbul. Um uh Kansu Susi Bobani, because if I now, but 
if you pass around Nambara. And we in diaspora are concerned more than Unu and Unu. The reason I did concerned because as in Onye, Njepo, Nakonyi, Siawa, if we're a um, if I know what we are, I'm not a, pol I'm, yeah, I'm not a politician, but that's on you, Quezo. Um, each uh, one of the Quezo personally, I have assessed all the people, candidates, and they are those that are vying uh, for the governorship, Nanambra State, and the Ophonia, so also one person, Bonyema, they qualified. That seat. Mobu na anambara ma me mistake family again. Obu na ma anambara ma na fa chori me kwa that mistake again. Fejiriwa yo onyo obu na akwado obosi vote ejetunyel val ozibo. Only val ozibo. We ife when the cap dies. Among gundini ne potale ne so val ozibo. Bonya weli ke e revive anambara. Kai wa no wa ni nke bozoku anya ma mbiri atasala atasa malu nke zole ezo. Na anya no bodo e babro e minuro na anya noro nuno. Anya we still investment in uno now which which ones. Egota. Ma na ke do nye ge make ife ni na sustain wo. Ke do nye ge a revive anambara because anambara e tie na as of now. Konyo obuna anambara tili tia piata right now. Kedonye ga po chiga anambara back. Who is that person? Valo Zibo. Omo le ebe no. I was in in Nigeria just last three months. So I happened to be on a question in anambara state. Precisely. And they discuss about politics. They discuss about the APC no de. PDP no de. APGA no de. And all personnel, no squad. We put it up. Somebody we make a one comment. We will say, "Naval or Zibo, see Gandhi, 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 and the other make a gag. We are not here to ego. Oh, not to ego. Me, mu anolo tu onwe mumbo. We be the way to make do nye uval or Zibo. Ana si not here to ego. So do ganya that Gandhi no um already. Hawa, a Zugi de Gaganam, but a Zugi de Ganam, but a Zucha, we keep one choice away my election. And then Mesu Onya Bunkong will tell it. His own coach in a year, an Ambaraka, and I chose the Kewere, a go, any, or the taxpayers' money. Kewele go for, we met by Aro. Eh, back and nowhere, that team inspired me to know who is Va. We be the make we move. We may get the workshop at Tajila Cam, make a research. We are mad that an ava is somebody. Amara Munyobu, a fuber of before. Mana Mua, Ndu. Well, who job am on my resources, everything. Convince ye on your bona. Oh, well, any work could I find you pass the MSC Biabasta de Nyoko, Buharis MSC to on you put it, or go to Lea. Mbani, mana utuwa nino keta, valo bie nye is the only source. And that is the only person, well, the, the capable. Iwe chikata ana ambara, tonu wanya haka kuluwa kwa azu, ainicha ni ina kwa duye, witepere, because ana ambara, etiena, aini idili revive ana ambara. Kaya kwa donu val, kaya revive ana ambara. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Ike chuko meko anya, please. Not minding that only open another election. Not minding only open another election. I do qualify, but I draw a drive development. I draw a drive an umbra. I in charge about to Chris engineer Chris and Mecca Azubog. Only open another this election. Now why no game men, no game men can, no game men can, men can. But let's look at the antecedents. Regard there is difference between corporate governance and political governance. You can succeed as a corporate go, in corporate governance and fail in political uh, governance. Will you succeed in, in corporate governance? After all, he, he got to the peak of banking sector as ED. 
but look at the gov gov uh, political governance. It's different ball game. The politics of development is very critical and very complex. Now let's look at it. Chris has work below from private sector. Ogul engineering. We be from we by in ICT. From there, we be as a consultant to Anambra State government between 2006 to 2011. He was the one, the person I consult to consult to Anambra State. We made verification of all the civil servants in Anambra. We were ghost worker non Anambra. One of the reasons why Mbadinju's government failed because was because inability of the government to pay salary. The cost of governance. Chris as, as, well, as a consultant, we help, we, we remove all the ghost workers. We can have verification of all the pensioners and civil servants. We go to schools. Only school name exists. Now, Kuko, Manahadi Mezi, Noka, Manahadi Mezi, anywhere. It was Chris as well, they removed them as a consultant, private consultant to Anambra State government. We may waste a state state over 100 million naira every month. After which he also suggested that state should, in the course of this uh, verification, all got all the schools in Anambra State, all the, and the only school they were primary school. On that note, he went to all the primary school, all the primary schools in Anambra State, and all the communities in Anambra State during the verification. We don't know where schools are going, and he made the suggestion. See, Ghana, you back. Anambra State, we use where you back. Peter will look check ga you back one billion naira or two billion naira and attack matching grants and we were able to our state we were able to work, to do what to invest on critical infrastructure like education which instead of one billion instead of one billion what project in law two billion today another one four billion naira untouched then you back because our state could not save four billion to match it you need the state needs credit again I am mean, going about Chris before the National Assembly. In 2011, Chris went to National Assembly, contested on the Afghan one, Ghana National Assembly. From there, to date, Chris has been the first, uh, first Anambra government facilitated IPP for power sector, take uh, mini grid, 10 megawatts for new commercial cluster. Chris, the only person to go Nubogo, when Uta Industrial Park. Chris is the only person I know currently on gas infrastructure. Because if you look at Ogun State, Ogun State today is making about 20 to 20, 25 billion naira IGR. Why? Because of gas infrastructure. Obasanjo, as head of state, facilitated gas, in, gas pipeline to Ogun State. And today, over 40% of Lagos industrial capacity moved to Ogun State. And that state, is making about 20 to 25. Anambra is making about 2 point something billion naira. You need such person that understand this, this business of development. And what am I saying? In terms of gas infrastructure, and you need to, you need this gas infrastructure to be able to activate private sector. You need support. Only they produce the same goods with only the same goods with somebody in Navy. He may produce no good state. He may put on each other cheaper than we produce in a name. Why? The person is producing with cheap gas. We need a governor that is already driving this, that is already fighting these things. Chris Azubog as a person conceived, I conceived some of most of this project and what and marketed it to the government. He understands the company with Tony Amaramaka government. He will only succeed in a private sector and Amaramaka government. Before or what a child. Four years ago, I need somebody that will learn on the job again. We need someone that has been on the system, understood the system, understand also the politics of the, the national government. You need someone that understands the politics of Abuja to be able to manipulate it and drive growth in an embassy. And that's where Chris comes in. And look at what Chris, Chris, the only administration, like when you could not leave the road, Akalo Chalalota, Nali, look it up, Chris, as well. I'm talking about the man from Lilu that is talking. Chris Azubo had a road in Lilu. Chris Azubo with um, with um, Abo, um, Honorable uh, Alaboso, they are driving bridge between Lilu and Ezinifite. Oh, Chris Azubo in the middle. Chris Azubo currently, I'm talking about Chris Azubo, the road now, uh, Amawa. 
Chris has bought somebody now come as a little managing. So you do a melu, erosilu, about two billion naira. It will a hospital in Sofia in December, December 2008. To date, I look at that hospital. If you could, if 13 years today, if you could not finish one hospital in 13 years in one village, how many years will it take him within eight years to finish that of Anambra? This is something we should interrogate our leadership, the leadership. So, you know, as a CBN, I'll tell me about C CBN governor, but I can tell you that as a CBN governor, they have capacity within each budget, each fiscal year to influence project what 10 billion naira in a state without, without, without thought, uh, offending the law. Again, in the solution you are talking about, Katu Manzeli, as a chairman, has committed on wars. See, Luzo, Obiayo, Luzo, Nagali, Sofia, only a particular place, but I don't know if you can see the Luzo there. These are things we don't have to take those risks again. We should be looking at Anambra. Currently, let me tell you also, Anambra is only uh, about 200 billion. No, I'm analyzing this thing. I'm analyze, okay. Allow us to analyze the states. We okay. are talking about this is a serious business. Allow everybody to analyze the, the foot of this. Oh, the same mistake. I mean, I analyze what we are not. We need, we need to interrogate it. Only of that is the election. Allow people to interrogate the personality of these people. That's how we can get it better. Well, so I hold anything. What you step out, allow interrogation around you. We are interrogating I'm, the leadership. You know, you know, I, I want to, I, I, you know, I'm an apostle of interrogation. We are only looking at our time because we still have another. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Thank you. So let me let me continue. So when you look at it now, Chris Azubog, now we're talking about private sector. Chris Azubog is, has been champion in 2014. Chris Azubog is that person that led an number of businessmen. To meet the president and tabled issues that are facing the number of manufacturing sector. In 2000, as a first time in National Assembly, he led to meet the then president. Innocent, Sikasin, all of them, named the Mora, Efab, Han Chanine, he led them and made presentation on what power sector, industrial capacity issue. Uh, road, what have you, and, and those things have been followed. And Emir, with water. Chris Azubo has facilitated about seven bridges. In an embassy, there's no local government without project from Chris Azubo. Tell me that local government that they mentioned not less than in Aguata, Chris Azubo had about three roads. In Olumba, Chris Azubo had a bridge and road and so many. So, what I'm talking about, if Anambra actually wants to drive growth, Anambra should think about Chris Azubo. You know, there's no sector he's not driving. Chris Albo Bialwe reactivated, abandoned um, a federal housing of 30 years. Chris Albo Bialo, Chris Albo Bialo again, we reactivated um, this in federal prison. Chris Albo Bialo reactivated um, uh, this in Rafia. Okay, today Chris Albo is driving a uh, sports, uh, um, uh, complete sports stadium. Chris Asbog as a person understand what it takes to drive growth as okay. we speak. Chris Asbog also to with with um, a, a House of Rep member from Imo State. They, they facilitated a bridge connecting Anambra and Imo. Chris Asbog understand intergovernmental relation. How the two states can uh, cooperate to drive growth that benefits the two states. These uh, are some of. Uh, Mr. Okay, I'll tell you All right. Just one minute, please. We are very much uh, time conscious at this point. Hey, good evening, everybody. Yes. Uh, so both English and Wakun were what you in Uh, I've heard if everybody here pull about individual candidates, but uh, one thing I've seen, but a lot of people are just saying this because many of them are pushing agenda. Mana, for me and for someone like me who has uh, an extensive knowledge in politics and I'm about uh, local politics and then at the national level, I was born uh, into a political family and for the past 30 years, I've seen politicians come and go. I've also, uh, by virtue of what I do for a living, I understand when people talk about corporate governance and transformational leadership. If anyone now talk about Solido, Chris Azubogo, and uh, let, let me chip in something. They're not saying that Chris Azubogo will this or that will this. Federal government just one offer, but yeah, you know, I think uh, if I knew that, 
Mm-hmm. So, claim was in a project CAPC, and project the chairman and the rest of them as their own projects. It's not as if a company in a class in where they go judge law project to say that they will be. That's not true. And I think they been want to stop saying all this. So, when you say in the Almo, you see how they receive good to put contract for work. I'm all not after they receive good for federal government. Having said that, uh, Val Osimo is a new face, is a new player in this uh, 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 politics and number. But I can tell you, Naval Aboro, a new face at all. Val, for the past 12 years, has been working between the things with most of the politicians you know. Naval, they go get her. If you don't know Naval, you don't know that that. For the men, Val, and for this, all these qualities, only China and the Yotago, I've taken time to study the man. I've researched him like the other guy said. And I like people who pick up challenges and they go ahead to get his job. Val go and kick up. He gets things done, but just like that. Yotago, I believe now if given this opportunity, Naval do the magic he's been able to do in Transcorp. Real real dividend, real, real shareholders, Transcorp will keep singing the face of Val every year for the rest of their life. Yotago. So, who who Anambra politics, ego businesses at home. Indeed, in the business, I from where a physical uh, facility somewhere, or anywhere shop somewhere. Don't say in Anambra said, open in the politics, in the business, Anambra. Oh, when the Anambra, look at the funny method, the business is at the wrong, physically, don't say physically at home. Yotago. You also need people who will help bring this. Uh, uh, who will help them to make their money from yes. wherever they are? Thank you very much. Um, when you, I would like uh, Ike Chuku to respond to a point he made clever that uh, the issue uh, engineers well should not claim federal government project because some pro- someone has already, uh, also wrote it down on the chat box. So, Ms. Tonya, how will you respond to that? Um, unmute yourself, please. And how do you respond to this challenge that? Uh, legislators should not claim projects that have been sponsored by the federal government. Ike Chukwu, you are still here? If you can please, please unmute Yeah, yourself. I'm here. Yes, can you respond to that? Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, what can bottle the Naya Bragram, but still go ahead and speak, please. No, no. Okay, go can ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. One, the issue of saying that Chris Azubog, uh, that Chris Azubog is still federal government project. Let me ask the person who are the fe- or who is the federal government. Federal government is made up of executive, judiciary, and legislative arm of the government. Chris Azubog is a member of federal government by virtue of having been elected as a member of National Assembly. Federal government is not Buhari. Buhari is the head of one of the arms of the federal government, which is executive. Chris Azubog is a member of another arm of the federal government, which is legislative. And there is no, you cannot have a capital project without a member of the National Assembly appropriating the project. In this case, Chris Azubog initiated most of this project conceive most of this project and design it and go and convince his, his fellow members of the National Assembly and move to the executive and also convince them via legislative executive uh, collaboration in budgeting. So it takes someone to conceive idea that there should be a road here or that there should be uh, this project here and all that. And after conceiving, Chris has well, we now move to the next uh, level of going to law, the meeting all that and Telling them why this thing should be, and come one of the. Let me give you an example. When they wanted to, when they announced that there will be a special um, uh, economic zone for two in each territorial zone. We have six uh, political zone in Nigeria. They said that there will be two. Chris Adubo made a clear uh, uh, presentation. I insisting they selected Enugu and Aba. For Southeast, Chris Adubo made a serious presentation before the Federal Executive Council, insisting that that Anambra should have, that Newi Isis should have, and made a lot of cases. And instead of twelve, Nigeria was given thirteen. Due from okay. due to the pro- uh, all right. from okay. Chris Adubo, okay. right. he well, knows where you. to go. Yeah, and we thank you for making that. Anambra had one, yeah. extra one. 
Okay, so what thank I'm you saying, very much. in essence, is that Chris Azubog does not steal project. He conceived he is part of. Okay, we, uh, Vico, we oh. thank you. If we can stay here for the whole night, let's now start rounding this up. Augustin, you get one minute, please. I'll, I'll mute yourself. Okay, I just did. Can you hear hello, me? Mr. Yes, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Host. Yes, go ahead. Augustine is on. Augustine is on. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. P please, quickly. Okay, quickly. I just take one minute. I just take one minute. Yes. Um, uh, one. Let's um, uh, let's be more technical. One, when one is elected into an office, there is a function assigned to the office. If one is elected into National Assembly. He is expected to go there and lobby and attract projects. It is a clear thing. There is no ambiguity between it. You cannot come and start saying that a legislator is stealing project. That is infradic. Because when you go to the projects in the, in the same federal government record, you will see that the person's name is under it, that the government itself acknowledged that this project was attracted by this person. So, 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 you see, they see the first, you see the second one, you see everything, the process through which such project was attracted. Okay, so that is on the one hand. And on the second hand, I am saying that this state do not need a banker at this point. Okay, we have tried bankers and they have failed. Please, we have to, it is it's a simple course of action on that if a particular institution or style of people have failed, we keep them aside and go to another sector. So we have tried bankers and bankers have failed. And we would like the bankers to excuse us. <laughs> they are good with corporate management. They should excuse us. Let's go into other political leadership and business leadership to see if we can make, can make something out of Anambra State. Except if the banker is saying that bankers have not failed, then we will not be scared of him that he do not understand failure. Because when you say they have not failed, uh, then you are simply uh, telling us uh, that he do not understand where the state has failed. The state uh, has failed so, and it is not properly lubricated. Uh, and uh, so if a lawyer from Augustine, my brother to Augustine, and so if a lawyer so, so 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 if a lawyer I'm bad was a lawyer has failed. So that means all lawyers should no longer contest the government. <laughs> yes, yes, it follows. It is logistical. It is logistical because he he has no mind of his own. That was what I said about Soludo before. We should be careful. Soludo appears to be someone that has no mind of his own. He might know what to do, but he has no mind of his own. You right, do not you. deal with people like that. People must okay. be sovereign in their thoughts because the very character of the state, in the corpus luteumness, in the just thought of the state, sovereignty is very important. And for one to govern the state, he must be independently minded. That is my argument. All right. Okay. Okay. We well, thank you. Um, Osiya Nokafa, please. Thank you for coming back. Please, one minute. One minute. Uh, uh, Obina. My dear friend. Um... Hello, but well done. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Good, good evening, everybody. First of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's a wonderful program. I mean, let's have this once every week till the election is over, till the primaries and the election is over. Then again, I think that after the primaries, we should also bring the contestants, the candidates to come on this platform and also have their debates. Um, you must, you should tell us what you have done. We are not going to go back to the um, Obiano's administration. Onya Biano, Mara Nambra, Oja Lol, Lucian, and Lagos, Nova London, I do not see a Kovacia Nambra, Walu Power near Omari Habu Power. In a different administration, you should have political and governance. Ada Mutia Mota, Ada Totia Tota, you should be part of the process. You must have been part of the process. Either as an executive or as a legislator, he can get the part of the process. And he in an aquarius now has the election. I'm going to be a judge. Soludo was CBN governor. Soludo, 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 former CBN governor. 
tell us what he has done after that CBN governor, Anasa Eliaka. What has he done after CBN governor? When he was CBN governor, he was a minister of finance. To do a country on no World Trade Organization as the, as the DG. Without allowing uh, primaries na, 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 na PDP in 2010. And that is the same thing he's doing now. That is the man he wanted to govern Anambra. How? We cannot make such mistake again. We don't need any inexperience with governance in Anambra. He must be part of the system. He must have been part of the system. Either as a contractor or as a politician. Manega must understand the other system and about governance. Nanambra, when we kitchen you, Nanambra. I'm not saying I'm not support this kind of I'm support to Anya, but I'm only saying Nandia na si soludo on the na those new fights. I call them political new fights because has there been an election? He got zone election. Malu ke isa is ballot box. Malu ke isa protect the election. I will take the party in the game. The election is the same election. It's not a real glory. Whether I would like it or not. Politics are just straight. It's how I say we are. So please, my advice to everybody is in uh, whoever you are supporting, have that Anambra in mind. Any person that will govern Anambra and govern Anambra very well must be somebody to go tested and trusted. I must see what the person has done. We think Kobela and Wainia, yeah. I say I blue council of Kojo, I say I blue party chairman, I say I blue local government chairman or house of rep or house of. In Kobela and Wainia, Yoji, the person must be able to tell us what he has done with that one before he be here also. Okay, we thank you. Yeah, before we round off finally, Elvis, please. That's the last person we are calling. Sorry to, I thought you busy made that comment. Because he said something. Moderator, who something? Which in his correction. Yes, okay, okay, correct him then. Yes. Onyo Abuna Polo Soludo, a political neophyte in Anambra, the very young, or the person doesn't know politics. Politics are Anambra, you know what, with PDP. Soludo was one person who followed a QME right from a QME's time. Soludo played active politics. Thank you. Okay, we well, thank you um, very much. Um, Elvis, I please. Think, uh, I, I think I need to just add a little thing. Yes, there, so um, good uh, evening. No more than one, one minute or 60 seconds. Hello, Who is sorry, let me correct you. On what I'm going to do, Soludo, political new fight. I only emphasize sorry? that Soludo, uh, let me correct something. Hello? Hello, good evening. I didn't yeah. say that Soludo, so, political new fight. I only said that Soludo should be what he had done with the one on Jaleja. Let him tell us what he has done. And where okay. he has got into um, after the CPM. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Well, thank you. Um, please, let's um, thank um, you. Um, is Elvis still there? Just make a comment yeah. quickly. Okay. Um. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um. Basically, um, I've listened to various speakers with regards to the aspirants for this year's um Anambra State election, but I must be very, very honest and frank. Going through the CVs of virtually all the aspirants, I can say for sure, like um, one of the speaker rightly said, that so many of the aspirants are people who do not have a mind of their own. If, for example, you take um, Chris Azubogu as an example, you will get to understand that he's been somebody who's just been in the legislature, like he's just a legislative kind of person. He doesn't have that managerial career. Look at Charles Soludo, for example, in the aftermath of his tenure as the former CBN governor, he didn't improve himself with, with anything that is visible to Anambra people with regards to management and all that. Looking at um, um, Ifan Uba, he's a young personality, but he doesn't really portray that thing that any young person really needs. I feel, in all honesty, that we shouldn't be talking so much about the problem, but we should emphasize more on the solution. And one of the basic solutions I feel Anambra people need right now is Valentino Zigo. He is a manager that you can rely on, that can really give you what you want. The truth of the matter is we've gone past that era where one person sits up today and says something at the end of the day, we are not able to get solutions. We need somebody we can rely upon. 
somebody who is a manager who you can walk up to and say, sir, this is what we need for this particular sector. And he gets it done. And that person is Valentino Zibu. I think to a very large extent, I have gone through the profiles of virtually all the aspirants. And trust me, the person you need to run the affairs of Anambra State is Valentine Ozigbo. And no, okay. no, 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 that person. All I right. wouldn't want to keep emphasizing on Valentine Ozigbo and all that. But okay. I feel Anambra people should be wise as to arranging themselves, preparing themselves for the fact that what they need basically is solutions to their problems. Look at what Abga has done to them right now. We need somebody that can really hold its own, somebody who is not cajoled, somebody who would not be um, dancing to the tune of one godfather somewhere. And at the end of the day, we are not able to make heads way. So all right, my very solution much. is very simple. Okay, thank you. Both uh, incompetence. Thank you. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, Paul, now what do you think? You, you, we have had this uh, conversation now for, it's about, it's more than two hours now. Can you give us an, a brief synopsis, analysis of the discussion so far and the topic. Paul, Njoku, can you now unmute yourself? All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the vision. Uh, this um, interaction has been a one, once in a while. We will be, if not every week, so that Sindhya will know they are going to vote. I think um, it is a privilege, it is a fundamental right of people to decide whom they vote and whom they want to vote. Because in the past, retrospectively, we have encountered so many incompetent people who emerge as governor or leaders in this country and our society through what we call Godfatherism. And Godfatherism is not uh, very good for democracy, governance, and leadership. We need to know whom we are going to vote. We need to know who should be voted. We need to know the capacity, the competence of whoever that is going to be voted because this democracy belongs to all of us. This government belongs to all of us. The problems belongs to every Anaberian. I think our participants should always have a, at the back of their mind that um, this is not a uh, uh, a symbolism of conflict or attack or personal insolence to people or candidates whom we have uh, allowed to be voted for. What we are doing here is a clinical analysis of personality traits of the candidate who we wanted, who we want to vote. Because if we continue to do Godfatherism, his uh, philanthropy. He built rules for us. He said that we have the because we are from history and from personal values belonging to all of us. We have encountered almost time where these people are voted into power, and a short period of time you cannot assess them. They become demigods to themselves and even to the people who are allegedly voted for them. So, ladies and gentlemen, and people watching from the world, including social media, and this is a Lumba television. And what we're doing here is not, nothing but the truth, nothing but giving everybody a platform to air your minds and your views. And we do not entertain any criticism, any insolence, insults, and attack. Because who do this? I think. We will certainly get to somewhere if we continue to you know, be having this kind of um, discussion because the election is at hand. So right. we are time to this platform and apparently invite the key actors in this exercise who are otherwise the aspirants, you know, who will vie for these things. And I want to talk very importantly next time, please call your people. Your friends, we will publish the links. Tell them to, tell them to link up with the this advice so that they can tell us what they have in mind. They can scrutinize who their candidates are. They can tell us candidates are very competent leading down an number. And we are not going to elect somebody who is incapacitated, who has the, 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 the lack of the intellectual prowess, industrial prowess. 
no one from you. Okay. 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 Um, Nicholas, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it is always a pleasure when I come, you know, on this forum to talk about uh, issues that concerns development, especially as pertains to Anambra. Uh, Anambra is particularly dear to a lot of people, even though we are not from there. It's there because uh, in terms of uh, uh, governorship politicking, I, I believe that Anambra has set a pace and the robustness of the discourse we've had so far has again demonstrated it. Uh, in subsequent uh, you know, uh, interactions we are going to be having, I, I, I want to see more of this type of uh, you know, kind of discourse that we'll be having. And let me just say too, that uh, whatever we have said about all this, uh, the aspirants as it were, is not exhaustive. Uh, I believe uh, we, we have not exhausted virtually every, every one of them. I think uh, more opportunity opens, especially in the area of gender. I, I see that we haven't, talk, we haven't spoken more, you know, much about uh, the women aspirants too. Uh, there is a Kudife, uh, and there was a name I was even expecting to see on the list. I, I'm not sure I overlooked it, Stella Odua. You know, as much as we want to say so many things about her, I think she was a performer when she was a mini when she was in the Ministry of Aviation. You know, so I think these are some of the things that our viewers should look up, look forward to in our subsequent, uh, you know, interaction. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been uh, 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 engaging, and it's been an eye opener because I particularly have learned so much about some of these content, these, these contenders that we are talking about, and I think. Uh, uh, it gives us something to work on, and it gives us a lot, you know, to look forward to in our next interaction. Thank you. All right, thank you, Tim. Do you have any comments? Yes, Anambra, <clears throat> Anambra on the spotlight again. Um, we we had a test of of what Anambra would have been like during the days of. Uh, uh, of Ngige and uh, uh, P2B. Unfortunately, the state derailed uh, politically, economically, and in terms of general governance. This is an opportunity to correct uh, mistakes, if I may say so. Well, last some time ago, Soludo said, if it's not broken, then don't mend it. But this time around, Soludo is saying, it is time to really mend it. That, that is every the way, watch word on every lips is that Anambra is broken. One one of our speakers today say, said it uh, clearly and vehemently that Anambra it go go. So this is the time, <laughs> and I totally agree with him. This is the time for the Anambra to to rally round and see how they can mend that broken port, so to say. Although they say broken bottle has no mequatarism, but I was then the broken bottle these days can be mequatarized with a modern technology. So this is time for our Andanambra to really look for that person who has the ability and capacity to mequatarize that uh, broken bottle. The opportunity is here again. Soludo said it, it is it has now been broken. It is time to fix it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so people are asking how often will we be having this um, conversation? You will be hearing from the television studio and very soon. Uh, sorry, very... sorry, sorry. One more thing. Let me quickly add. I when you called on uh, when you called on uh, Mr. Engineer Chris Azubog, I, I was trying to interject you because calling on him will be disenfranchising other aspirants because we made it clear that today is a day for their aides and their supporters, not for the aspirants. So bringing uh, Chris Azubogo here would have disenfranchised a lot, but I'm happy at the end of the day he wasn't there. So next time, the day we will have the, uh, we will call on aspirants, we hope he will be here. And then to, as a one popular uh, uh, media guru will say in, in Abuja, he will use his own mouth to chew his own onions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We thank all of you, Tim, Nick, and Paul. Thank you very much for ably hosting this.
program. And then we thank um, uh, Augustine uh, Emeka Obala, two of the panelists who managed to be here today. Thank you very much. We thank all the supporters of the various aspirants who are here to speak for their candidates. A lot of other candidates, some of other candidates are not happy that they were not informed on time. So we apologize. Next time, we hope they will be here. And then we thank all of you. I will not start mentioning everyone by name. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we look forward to having you around next time we have this meeting. We don't know yet when the next meeting will be, but we are hoping that it will not be too long. You will be hearing from Elumba Television when it's time. So thank you all and good evening.